In this video, I'll be explaining how to set up the tools necessary for making ROM hacks of Oracle of Ages for the Game Boy. I've been working on these tools for quite a while now, and things have finally sort of stabilized to the point where I'm starting to feel comfortable making tutorials without being worried that I'm going to overhaul everything tomorrow and make the tutorials outdated. Um, but before getting into the setup of the tools, let me just show you what they look like. This is Lab. I released version 1.0.0 today. Um, it's got all the basic features you need for editing stuff. You can tiles. I'm not going to make anything too involved right now. Draw stuff. Oh, it only supports ages for now. Seasons will be supported, but for now it's just ages. Um, yeah, we can tear down this fence if we want. Um, the object viewer is something I really like. Uh, it actually draws the objects here as they would be shown in-game for the most part. This is actually, well, it's not important, but this is a frame which is unused in the game, or at least you can barely see it in-game. It's the time portal. Um, we got warps. Right-click to follow the warp. It's a bit sluggish sometimes. Um, I'm not sure if it's just my Windows VM being sluggish or something else going on, but it's a bit sluggish sometimes. Um, so yeah, this is basic editing. And uh, this is not the whole picture though, so I'm going to close this down and and this. So this is Oracle of Ages. Like this is all the files needed to generate an Oracle of Ages ROM file. Um, so for a very basic example, let's go to text, ages, text.yaml, edit this. Uh, yeah, I already have this up here. Accept that quest here. This is the very first thing that they say to you in game. And this file, by the way, this file contains all the text in the game, like all of it, all of it. So let's edit this. Let's say like, uh, I love hacking with ages for the Game Boy Color. Um, and that's all we have to do to actually make the change. Now we just have to recompile it. So this is a disassembly, and what we're doing here is we're compiling this assembly into a ROM file. And again, this is more sluggish than I'm used to. I'm not sure if it's uh, the Windows VM, but I'm hoping I can make this faster in the future. And once this compiles, we will open it in our favorite editor. I like to use BGB. Here we go. I love hacking up of ages. Game Boy Color. It's as simple as that. Um, well, it's kind of simple. Um, on one hand, it's certain changes that are very easy to make. On the other hand, the setup process is uh, very complicated. Now, I think this is a lot more flexible than the tra traditional approach to ROM hacking. Normally what you would do is you would just edit the ROM file directly and like use a hex editor or maybe specialized tools would exist for a certain game, but at the end of the day you're just editing the ROM file directly. The problem with that is it's very difficult to like insert data because if we look at this, like this is way longer than the original string and if we were doing this like with traditional ROM hacking we would have to find some more space to put this, update the pointers and stuff, and like that's all, that's all, the pointers being updated behind the scenes here, so that's that's just my custom tools, but the really nice thing about this is that all the data after this, like all the stuff below this, it just gets shifted automatically. Like the disassembly allows us to just shift data whenever we need more space. So that's something really nice about using a disassembly. Um, but it was, it was a lot of work to get set up and setting it up even for the end user is kind of complicated. Um, so that's why I decided to just show you how it looks first and kind of sell you on it first. So now I'm going to explain how to set it up without further ado. Okay, so I brought up this page on my Zelda hacking wiki. I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, this wiki, by the way, also... Well, it, it's kind of sparse right now, but I'll put more information on it as time goes on. It has various information about hacking uh, Oracle of Ages. Anyway, we'll just focus on this page for now. Um, now, you're on Win I'm assuming you're on Windows. If you're on Linux, this will be actually be easier because this was designed on Linux. So essentially, you need to install some kind of Linux compatibility layer on Windows. And luckily, that's become easier. Um, Microsoft has something called Windows Subsystem for Linux, which is essentially just you install Linux inside Windows, and um, they can interoperate to an extent. Um, the problem with this is you need a fairly recent version of Windows 10. Um, like, I think that there's a 2019 update which allows you to access Linux files from Windows, which is pretty important for this. So if you don't have that 2019 update, then um, there's option B which is SIGWIN. This is older and it'll also work on Windows 7, Windows 8, anything, pretty much. 
Uh, the problem with this is that I've had people report that it is extremely slow when compiling this assembly. It like, takes an hour to compile it the first time. And I know my code is not optimized, but it shouldn't be that bad. But anyway, if you can't use Windows Subsystem for Linux, then SigWin is also an option. I'll assume that you're on Windows 10, and therefore that you can use Windows Subsystem for Linux. So let's go through this. So instructions. Um, this page here. Um, this, you don't need to go to this page, but it essentially the instructions on this page are summarized here. So you run this command um, as an administrator in PowerShell to uh, enable the Windows, Windows Subsystem for Linux uh, features. So PowerShell, right click, run as administrator. Okay, and okay. and you right click to paste. Hello, right click, paste. You do this. Now I've already done this, of course. So um, it's still doing this thing anyway for some reason. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't done this before, then you'll have to reboot after this step. Um, now, since I've already done this, I'm not going to reboot. Um, after this, you install Ubuntu from the Microsoft Store. And I know that's a weird sentence, but that's what you do. Uh, I, I, un I uninstalled Ubuntu just before this so I could show it from a fresh install. Um, yeah, so I'll cut the video and show you when it's finished. Oh, come on, no, we don't need to do this. There we go. Okay, so it's going to ask you to log in. Just don't bother logging in. You don't need to log in. Stupid Microsoft. Anyway, wait for this to finish downloading. Ubuntu has just been installed. Let's launch it. Now, when you first... Oh, I'm going to have to wait some more. When you first install Ubuntu, it's going to ask you to create a username and password. Uh, consider that you're basically installing an another operating system inside Windows, so that's the reason why you're creating a new username and new password. Um, the username has to be lowercase. Um, yeah, so I'll wait for this to give me the prompt. Okay, so it looks like you finished installing. Now I'm going to enter a username, all lowercase, and then prompt you for a password. Now, a funny thing about Unix is that when you type a password, nothing actually appears. Um, so I'm just going to. Okay, so installation was successful. And here it's going to give us our terminal. There we go. Okay, so you want to set up. Now let's see what the next step is. Once you've set up your username and password, you're going to run these two commands sudo apt update to update the package list. And by the way, here's a tip. Uh, if you go and right click here and go to properties, I already checked this, but if you check use control shift C shells via copy paste, that'll enable the ability to copy paste into this window. With control shift V to paste. Okay, so we've done that. I actually already ran this command. There was a cut there. And then we run sudo apt install make. That'll take a second. Um, now we go to the Linux section. The rest of the instructions are the same for Windows or for Linux. So uh, we already got these prerequisites. Don't need to worry about that. Now WADX. WLADX is the assembler which we use. It assembles Game Boy code into machine code. So uh, to, um, I've created uh, pre-compiled binaries which you can just use and you run these commands to download it. Let's copy these. This is all I make. So run these commands. Enter. Alright, so what this did is it downloaded these executable files. Uh, WLAGB and WLA link. It, it downloaded these um, into our user local bin directory. And this means this just means that we can execute these anywhere. So if we type WLAGB, this is now a command which exists in our Linux system because we downloaded the file. We're not going to run this directly, but it is necessary for our um, it is necessary for the build process to have these executables. Um, now, we don't need to do this. We, this is an alternative option. You can compile WLADX yourself if you want to, but there's no need to, so we can skip this. Now, download the disassembly. Um, 
you clone it. So this doesn't do anything, but change it, go to your home directory, and then git clone. What this does is it'll download the disassembly into here. It'll take a second. The, dis the repository is like 50 megabytes or something. It'll take a second. Okay, Oracle's disassem has finished downloading. Um, next step, we cd Oracle's disassem. This just this stands for change directory. Change directory to Oracle's disassem. And now our directory is here. And um, we can type ls. We, this is, you know, you do this, but you can type ls to just see the files in the directory. This is everything in the Oracle's disassembly. Um, now, check out the hack base branch. Now, by default, when you clone something on GitHub, it defaults to the master branch. And in this case, the master branch is Oracle of Ages unmodified, just a vanilla version of Oracle of Ages. In this case, if our goal is to make ROM hacks, we need to check out the hack base branch. This will make some modifications to the game to make it easier to hack. This is optional. You can just do this if you want. This, if you're going to be collaborating with, other, with multiple people, then this will help avoid what we call git merge conflicts. Essentially, if two people edit the same thing, uh, this can help resolve those two changes, like merge them together in a better way. Come on, it's not working. Tools, git, install, merge. Oh, oops, I need to fix that. Uh, Okay, that worked actually. There's an error message here, but it says at the end. Let's check it works. Again, this isn't that important, but okay, we installed the merge driver here. So, um, now time to actually attempt to make it. So, make this is the command which compiles the assembly. Um, J4 dash J4. This tells it to run with four threads. So, if you have four cores, then that'll essentially speed this process up by four times. And time, you don't need to do time. I might remove this from the tutorial. The time just times how long it takes. I like to do that. Time make dash j4. Now, on my virtual machine, this takes about five minutes the first time you do it. After the first time, it becomes much, much faster. Um, I hope that it's just my VM being slow in a lot of cases. But uh, yeah, I will try to optimize this further and make it take less time. Okay, this assembly is finished building. Um, what that means is if we type ls here, we'll see this file ages.gbg has been created. That's our new ages rom file. Now, next step, we've finished setting up this assembly. So now let's go on to Linolab. So first you need to download the .NET Core 3.1 runtime. This is a link directly to Microsoft's site. Now, obviously, I've already installed this, so we, I'm not going to go through the whole process, but it's a generic installer. Just to run through it, do what it says. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to close this. And then you download in the lab itself. Um, obviously, take the latest release. This is the newest one, obviously. First one. And we're going to go ahead and extract it. Now, finished extracting. We can go ahead and just run it. We can, we can just run the exe, but quiet windows. Why? Why would you do this? Okay, so I misunderstood. I thought it detected it as a virus, but it's not a virus. Um, I mean, trust me on that, it's not a virus. It's just that Windows doesn't like running inside apps, I guess. So, run anyway. Alright, and that's the lab working. Now, the weird thing about this is that your disassembly is in the Linux system. It's not in the Windows system. So if we try to open it and look for it, you're going to have a hard time finding it. Uh, so the workaround for that is that you can do one of two things. First of all, 
you start by going to explorer.exe, and this is in the Linux terminal, explorer.exe dot, dot stands for the current directory. Type enter, and that'll open Windows Explorer here. This is how you find your files. Now I would recommend putting a shortcut here, um, like go up a directory and then uh, send desktop, create shortcut. That'll make it easy to find your, find your directory later, because otherwise you might have trouble finding it in your Windows system, because this is in the Linux system. And then press Control L. And this is your path. This is the path to your. Sorry, I should go up here. Then Control L. This is your path to your Oracle's disassembly. So you can copy this. Control C. And then go to open it. Now press Control L again. Control V. And really, I doesn't want to do that. Well, there's a different different option. Um, so if we go back to the Linux lab directory. Here we go, little lab directory. I have a .bat file. Edit this. Can you stop? How would you stop Notepad from running? Okay, anyway. Um, little lab.exe and then replace everything after this with your path. So, control V, this is the path. Save it, close it. Double click it. And it'll open your disassembly. Sorry, I'm getting exhausted by Windows shenanigans here. This is why I don't use Windows, among many other reasons. But, yeah. Alright, and that's setting up Linux Lab. And from here, um, you can just edit what you want here. Let's go to the first area, actually. Uh, make a house here or something. Do whatever we want. Let's put a house here. I want to implement a rectangular select so that I could like m select multiple tiles in the tile set. That would speed things up a bit. Uh, let's see. Window tiles here. And where's the door? Here it is. And let's that work. Like this isn't gonna be a real tutorial. I'm just gonna I'm just screwing around right now. Would you stop? Oh my god. Windows. I think you just hung up on the lab. Well, anyway. Okay. It works. I don't know what's going on. Windows. I wish Windows would stop. Anyway. Um, this warp doesn't go anywhere. Let's add to like... I don't know what room this is. Let's go room 54. It goes to room 54. Uh, X position 4. Y position 4. X position 5. I don't know where it is. Uh, and let's save it. And now we've saved it. Now we have to compile it. So we go back to Ubuntu. Run make. Wait for it to finish. Oh, and see here. This is the interesting thing. You can see what it changed here. Compressing rooms, ages, small, room 008A. That's this room. Room 08A here. That's the room we just changed here. And. And some warp data. We changed the warps. That's another thing it changed. It's just a neat way you can see the changes you made. And also, get status will also show you the changes. These are the files we modified. Anyway, uh, we've compiled ages, so let's run it. Let's use the shortcut we made. Find ages.gbc and let's run it. There's a house, where's it go? Okay, well... That's wonderful. So oh, that's Linux Lab, and that's the Oracle's disassembly. I hope people will use this to make some cool Oracle of Ages hacks, and I'll make more videos in the future to explain more functionality, like basic Linux Lab usage, how to create objects, everything you need to do. So yeah, hope you enjoy.